Good morning. What a beautiful morning. It's so good to be with you and it's a privilege to share with you in English what the topic is of this day. And it is about Jesus who voluntarily sacrificed himself for us. He chose you and me above himself. But before we speak about that, let's pray together. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we want to glorify your name. We want to thank you for a beautiful day like today. But we also want to thank you for this wonderful message that we are about to hear, for your word that explains it to us, for your love that made it possible, and for your spirit that helps us on the one hand to understand, but on the other hand to accept and to live by your love. We pray that you will bless us and that you will enlighten our hearts as we listen to your word and that you will speak directly to us in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. I would like to begin to, to say that I find it very sad that we do not pay as much attention to Easter and the passion of Christ as we do pay attention to Christmas and the birth of Christ. It could be because of the way how the annual holidays are, are falling in place because at the end of the year many businesses close for a few weeks and it means that, um, that it's, a, it's a better time. And then of course on Easter you've got this beautiful long weekend for only a few days of leave and that means that many people often are not at their hometown and their church when it's Easter. But still, I think there is also a misunderstanding about the meaning of Easter, you know? Almost a third of each gospel is about Jesus and his passion and his suffering, but we do not spend so much time on that. Even as church, we do not spend enough time, I think, on uh, the passion of Christ and his suffering for us. Uh, asking questions and, and finding answers like, for instance, why did he suffer? When did it begin? How should we react? How can we benefit by celebrating it annually? So today, we are going to pay attention to the truth and the meaning of the very fact that when Jesus came to suffer and die on the cross, it was for our sake and he did it voluntarily. We should never make the mistake to think that or, or to limit Jesus' suffering only to the week that began with Palm Sunday, this holy week that we call it, these six days from this Sunday before Easter till Good Friday. Um, in that time, he washed his disciples' feet, but Peter denied him, uh, Judas uh, betrayed him, the disciples left him alone, the, the leaders of the Jewish nation condemned him, and um, the Roman authority actually condemned him to be crucified. We must always realize that this is not the only part of Jesus' suffering. Jesus' whole life was suffering. And it's important for you to understand that because then we will understand this message better today. The very fact that Jesus came to earth to be our Savior already meant that he had to give up his place in heaven. Did you know or do you realize that that meant or meant suffering for him? We sing songs of joy about the child born in the manger because for us it's awesome. But do you realize what it actually meant for Jesus? It meant humiliation. He had to become almost less than nothing by becoming a human, although he was the creator. Paul puts it this way in Philipp Philippians 2 in verse 6 and 7. He says, being in the very nature God, or sorry, being in the very nature of God, Jesus made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. 
So living in human flesh on earth, that didn't mean that Jesus had 30 wonderful years and then suddenly a very bad week. No. His whole life was a life of suffering. He experienced suffering daily. Like for instance, the hardship in the desert when Satan tempted him. How many people rejected and scorned him during his life. Even his own family in the beginning didn't believe who he was. And then he lost loved ones, like for instance Lazarus. And he even cried when he saw how Lazarus' sister was so deeply hurt by the loss of her brother. Excuse me. <coughs> At one place we see that he got tired of traveling and had to, he had to rest and he wanted water. Then at another place we read how he cried about the faith of Israel who didn't accept the Messiah although he came for them. And right at the end of his life his best friends turned on him and left him. So Jesus knew suffering not because he was all-knowing but because he experienced it in his own life. And only then we are, we are, going, to, are going to talk about his, his life, or sorry, his suffering on the cross. So his whole life was suffering. And then we haven't even spoken about this last week. This last week was really the culmination of everything. As I said, um, after washing his disciples' feet and warning Peter, Peter carried on and denied him. Judas betrayed him. The disciples fled and left him alone. And then the Jewish people wanted him dead and took him to the Roman uh, um, authorities and they condemned him and sent him to be executed. And before that, they even tortured him and then only took him to hang on the cross. And all the time, he had the heavenly authority to stop it. We're going to read it just now. But he voluntarily subjected himself to these sufferings to save you and me. And that is the actual message that we would like to spend our time on today. Jesus voluntarily gave himself to suffer on our behalf to save us. Scripture is full of this, but the paragraph that I would like to read to you today is one that is, that is so well known that we might even take that so for granted as we take Christmas for granted. So I want to read the passage of the Good Shepherd in John chapter 10, and you can read with me from verse 11 to 18. And listen while we read how Jesus, uh, th there's a truth that Jesus repeats three times. Listen if you can hear it before I give it to you. John 10 from verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of the sheep in. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and then shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. Isn't this powerful? Jesus said three times, verse 11, The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Verse 15, I lay down my life for the sheep. Verse 17, I lay down my life. And then the actual verse that, that catches our attention today. Verse 18. No one takes it from me, 
but I lay it down of my own accord. Jesus is no victim. He says, no one takes it from me. Jesus is the Savior. He says, I lay it down of my own accord. He saved us from his own free will. Wow. This is why he came. That is why Christmas happened. And although it was bitter that his whole life was suffering, he still did not withdraw. And in Gethsemane, he even suffered in prayer, sweating like blood. But on our behalf, or for our best will, for our salvation, he persevered. Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning the shame. Why is it so important that Jesus declared to us here that his suffering and his sacrifice is voluntary or was voluntary? If that was not true, if Jesus actually was forced to die against his will, only out of duty for us because his father asked him, then how would we know if he really loved us and how much he loved us? But now that we know that he chose to give up his life for us, now we know, we know the depth of his life, sorry, the depth of his love lies in his free will. Jesus wants to assure you today that his love and the Father's love are the same. And we know in John 3, 16, that the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That is the reason why Jesus compares the good shepherd, excuse me for a moment, <coughs> that is the reason why Jesus compared the good shepherd with a hireling or a hired shepherd with someone who does not own the sheep because the owner of the sheep Jesus he knows his sheep and his sheep know him they are precious to him all that is precious to the hireling is his own welfare he would never give up his life for a few sheep his love for his own life is more than for the sheep but because he knows his sheep Jesus our good shepherd would rather lose his own life than lose his sheep. He loves us more than he loves his own life. Can you believe that? The Almighty Creator who made you, who made me, loves you and loves me more than himself. Wow. So the question now is, do you belong to God's sheep herd, to his sheep pen as this translation put it. You now know how much Jesus cares for you. How much do you care for him? The only way to appreciate what Jesus has done is to accept him as Savior and Shepherd and to be part of his herd. Listen to what John said a little bit further on in this chapter, verses 27 to 30. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. And they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my hand, my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Do you know Jesus? Do you listen to Jesus' voice? Do you hear his voice and listen to his voice? Do you follow his will? That is what a sheep do, Jesus said here. So I urge you today, urge you today. Jesus voluntarily sacrificed his whole life for you. If you hear that, and if you claim that for yourself, then you are part of his sheep pen. And then his coming to this earth was worthwhile. If you have not claimed that salvation yet, do it now. 
to me today. Acknowledge his voice and follow him. He put himself, uh, sorry, he put you above himself. I want to urge you, surrender yourself to him. Accept him as your saviour, as your shepherd, and live under his protection. Let us pray together. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we know that we do not deserve anything. And yet you have done this for us. We want to glorify your name and thank you that you, that you voluntarily sacrificed your life so that our lives could be saved eternally. Thank you for your love and that you've demonstrated it to us. Forgive us for our selfish lives and teach us how to demonstrate our love for you in the way we live among other people. Help us to, to, to accept everything that you have done for us, not only part of it, and to follow you, obedient. To your voice in the name of Jesus. Amen.